Hello one and all, Mickey here Surviving RNG and I am here with 10 tips for you for Phantom Doctrine. First up, Revealing secrets. This little blue symbol here, when you send an agent over it to reveal a secret, they don't need to stay there. Just hit it, quit it, get back home, or move on to something else. And the informant will reveal their secrets alone in an empty room. How can you just leave me here? Just to brief yourself with the camera. You think I will be safe? Duh. It's a safe house. Nobody knows where it is. Well, here it is. When picking perks for agents, I would highly recommend picking perks that apply to both the stealth section of the mission and the combat section. Assuming, of course, you have those suitable perks available to you. Stealth is, of course, ideal, but you never know when something can change, things get out of your control, and combat's gonna start. So these perks are things like maximum awareness, awareness regeneration, movement speed, and most importantly, maximum health. Because, of course, you can only knock out a target that has the same or less health than the agent doing the knocking out. And if all else fails and you're already in combat, well, then you might as well shoot the enemy agent, reduce their health below the health of the agent that's doing the knocking out, and then knock them out. Full auto from any weapon that can do full auto removes all awareness from the target, regardless of distance as long as you can actually use the weapon at that range. Headshots ignore cover, again regardless of distance, and point blank with any weapon, point blank being standing on an adjacent tile to the target, ignores awareness. This applies at diagonals and even applies through cover, as long as you are of course right next to the target. Use these to your advantage to guarantee kills. Check weapons firing modes to see if they actually end the turn. If you see this little symbol, then it means it will end that agent's turn and leave them standing wherever they shot. But pistols, for example, whether you're just doing a standard shot or a headshot, does not end your agent's turn. So if you're in range and nobody's on overwatch, you might as well walk up to your target, point blank, shoot them, ignoring their awareness, and then walk back to your cover. And with the right perks, this would even apply to two-handed weapons, allowing you to walk up to a target, point blank with a shotgun, shoot them, then walk back to cover. Traveling to and from missions is instant. Doesn't matter where it is in the world, when you set up your agents, they instantly arrive at the mission, and when they're done at the mission, they instantly teleport back to HQ. Keep this in mind if you have agents stationed far from your HQ, perhaps in another continent, that you want to keep tabs on, and that you want to have a quick response to suspicious activity. If that agent went on a mission, they will teleport back home when they're done. Of course, you can use this to your advantage though. If someone is far from home, and there's a mission to go on, get them to go on the mission, then when the mission's done, they'll be back at HQ instantly. Bear in mind though, agents are already traveling and flying around the map, but cannot go on missions until they're done traveling. And one last thing, your agents don't need to be at home to switch out gear with other agents in the field or gear you've got at home. So if you've got a lone agent that's vulnerable on the other side of the world and elsewhere out on a mission you pick up heavy armor, feel free to instantly teleport that heavy armor to him. Which on a side note, make sure your agents when they're not on a mission always have the best armor available even if it appears openly hostile and whatever loose consumable items that they can carry just in case they get ambushed. When a mission comes up and that stuff is needed, take it off them, give it to the agents for the mission, then hand it out again after the mission is done. While on a mission, different types of enemy reinforcements can't arrive at the same time. So if you've got enemy troops on their way to reinforce a mission, you can't also have enemy air support on its way at the same time. Bear in mind this doesn't include air support that's currently active and currently doing strafing or bombing runs with cannons or missiles. Now why this is relevant is because if you're trying to extract and you've already got a helicopter flying overhead and you can't get out from underneath the roof or you're going to get gunned down, the best time to make a break for it is when enemy troop reinforcements are on their way and the air's fire support has ended. That'll buy you the most amount of time Time to get the extract. And thanks to Vlad Dracul for telling me this, healing an injured agent on a mission means that their injuries will also be healed back at base. So if on one mission an agent gets downed and is left on one health and you extract them, and when you get back home, you don't want them to spend the next few days in the med bay healing up, get them to go on the next mission on one health, making sure that a couple of people on that mission carry medkits with them, they can heal that agent up to full straight away, then when they get back to base, that agent will be fully healed. Compromised agents don't need to travel, not exactly. Obviously, as your agents do missions around the globe, their heat will increase. When it gets to about 75% plus, they're at risk of triggering an ambush, which will then require them to escape the map or risk being captured. Now, compromised agents are, of course, even worse off. They obviously also have that ambush risk, but the time it takes for them to do any traveling around the globe is doubled. So, of course, in an ideal situation, why even bother sending those agents out at all? You can keep two or three agents permanently compromised and only doing assault missions. Therefore, all that heat generation gets wasted on them, they're never at risk of an ambush traveling around the world being compromised, and you don't have to constantly fork out hundreds of bucks for new passports all the time. 
On each mission, there is a certain number of guards and civvies that can be knocked out before the enemy agents become suspicious. Now, bear in mind, this is just my experience, but I've encountered after the first couple tutorial missions, when the game starts proper, up until the first story mission, you can knock out two people on the mission, whether they're guards or civilians. After the first story mission, you can only knock out one. This is really good intel to know, and if you're not playing on Iron Man, I'd recommend finding out what number of people you can knock out per mission, based on where you are in the campaign, and then loading back and sticking to that number. Because of course, if you get that number wrong and you're on Iron Man, things can go very bad very quick. And bear in mind, again, this is just my experience, but this number of people that you can knock out doesn't apply to agents themselves. So if there are two agents on a map and you can only knock out one person on that mission before the agents become suspicious, knocking out one of those agents won't count towards that number. Both enemy and allied KO'd agents get extracted at the evac at the end of the mission. So if you're running a two-man job and one gets downed and you really absolutely must have that agent you've knocked out, which in that state I wouldn't recommend you go to that trouble, you can leave one of the agents at the extract you intend to use, pick up the other one, carry them to the extract as well. Then when you evac, all of the agents friend your enemy will get evac'd. That's particularly useful for large-scale missions where you have more friendly agents knocked out than other friendly agents can carry. Or of course, when something like this happens. Holy crap, what blew up the car? Oh my god. Okay, so we're not done yet. I have eight bonus tips. These are either a little bit more obvious or a little bit more trivial that I didn't want to include in the main ten. The first one is, don't forget to check how many agents are on that mission. As the campaign progresses, things can vary. And even if you don't have intel on the agents at that mission, you don't even know their names or their faces, you will at least see on the Geoscape how many agents there will be at that mission. Keep that in mind when you head down there. As boring as it is, be meticulous and get loot documents and camera consoles first before you knock anybody out, including the agent. If things go wrong, it's pretty unlikely you're going to be able to stay and get all that loot and intel. The only exception being is if a guard or civvy or even an agent is just stationary staring at a lootable object. At the beginning of the game at least, focus on hiring agents that have specialties in pistols you can get in the early game. Because these are the only weapons that will be able to have silencers for a good 5-10 to 10 hours worth of play. And a silenced weapon has saved my agents on so many occasions. Being able to do a headshot at range, taking out a guard that's about to notice somebody, is incredibly handy. And for you guys to know what these early game pistols are, they're the French Dow, the weakest of the pistols, the B76 and the .38 revolver. Those are the pistols you get very early on in the game, and the silencers you get just as early on will fit them and only those agents that specialize in those three pistol types will be able to modify their weapon aka screw on a silencer onto the end of the gun. If you're going to be moving base, try save up a little bit more money and hire agents just before you move. A variety of different things can increase the danger rating of your base, killing civilians, being late to the evac, enemy agents completing their missions, and hiring agents. So if you're going to move base because your danger rating is high, maybe wait a tiny bit longer, save up a little bit more money, hire an agent, max out the danger, and immediately move your base. When missions start appearing in a continent far away, do your best to station two agents there permanently. Ideally, agents are not very good at going on missions. That way, you can react rapidly to any suspicious activity that occurs in that continent. Of course, bear in mind, if you do have something like a six-man mission and nobody else can go, those agents in the other continent will teleport to the mission, then after the mission, immediately teleport back home. Then they're going to have to spend another 12 hours flying back over to the other continent. So if you can help it, keep two agents permanently stationed in a far continent. This one might seem a bit obvious, but if you intend to play on Iron Man, don't use the main character Deadpan on normal missions. Now, sure, story missions will quite often require him to be there, and you simply can't launch a story mission without him, but on any other mission, don't take him, because if he dies, it's game over. And minor spoilers here, be prepared before you make an MK Ultra facility. That is a base upgrade that allows you to perform a bunch of different actions to both friendly agents and enemy agents that you've captured. Now don't get me wrong, that's great and everything. Being able to convert a very powerful enemy agent over to your side is amazing, but be prepared that when you get it, things will instantly switch from when you capture an enemy agent, you get back home, they're instantly interrogated for a small bonus, like some intel or a new agent candidate, or maybe even a trade contract, then they're immediately executed, but when you get the MK Ultra facility, that will no longer happen of course and from that point onwards it costs 750 for every interrogation you do granted you can do multiple interrogations on the same subject and it also takes about 10 hours to do it and to top it off to execute them costs 500 bucks i don't really know what they were doing before the mk Ultra facility but that's the case so be prepared for that otherwise like me you'll arrive back home with two agents expecting a nice bit of free loot and instead you're expected to pay one grand to even kill them both which is terrifying because any enemy agent you have at your base 
person just sitting around being imprisoned generates danger for your base. So in my case, I would have to fork out a grand to immediately execute the two agents that I went to the trouble of capturing, hoping to get a bit of free intel, otherwise the entire time they'll be sitting around generating danger. And lastly, this one's a little bit superficial, but when you click an agent to go in disguise, you can click and unclick to randomly cycle through the available disguises that there are for that mission. There's a red spy in the base. I hope these tips have helped you out, and if you're interested, I have a Phantom Doctor in a Hard Mode Iron Man series going, and like all my other series, it's cut and edited to minimise the downtime, like for example, at the start of every mission, collecting loot and documents. The link will be in the description below, and should also be showing up as an annotation on the screen around now, or check out any of my other series, including XCOM Long War Iron Man Impossible Pets or Invisible Ink Expert Plus Iron Man or just anything else on my channel. So guys, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and let anyone else know if they enjoy it as well. It really helps out the channel and I'll see you guys in another video. Thanks for watching guys and bye bye.